Long before Chef Dion Vengatas even knew what the word Korea even meant, the universe conspired to get him interested in cooking by surrounding him with family members who had an instinct for balancing flavors and a respect for the ingredients. He eventually went on to study hotel management, but he dreamt of becoming a chef. Dion is known for his ability to give classic dishes an innovative Eastern twist, as today's menu goes to show. We all know the secret ingredient to any mouth-watering meal is always love. Today I'll be spending time with the lovely Dion Vengatas, and we will no doubt be cooking from the heart. Oh, oh hello Dion. <laughs> How are you? Good, good to be here. Okay, so we're going to be cooking from the heart today. I chose a few classics from my Oma's secret recipe book. You could really taste the heart in the food, not literally, but... So, a famous chicken soup. It's like a sort of broth with dumplings that float inside. Beautiful. And then we're going to go for a bit of a spicy option with the lamb vindaloo. Slow-cooked lamb, shoulder that's been diced in the spices. It's quite beautiful, nice and spicy. And then to finish off, a famous bread and butter pudding. My mouth is watering. Let's get to it. Let's get started. Very importantly, no measuring. It's about using all your senses. No measuring? Feeling, touching, tasting, smelling, instinct. Okay. What I'm going to do here is just sort of cut the chicken up into smaller pieces. That sort of fits the size of the pot. To start off, we literally want to place the chicken at the base of the pot. So, we just want to completely cover this with water and bring it to a boil. We literally just want to add the chicken and the water to start off. I've added all of the bones at the base, so when you're boiling it, it sort of lifts up all of the excess fats and scum that comes to the top from the bones. You want to continuously skim it as you're boiling it to get this sort of clear flavoured stock. Very important, if you don't boil it, you can end up with this cloudy sort of masky chicken broth and you don't want that, you want a nice clear one. In the meantime, while we're waiting this to come to the boil, we're going to make our dumplings. Firstly, the sour cream. So get the sour cream at the base and then some flour. Just sort of ruffle the sour cream through so it evenly gets distributed around the actual flour and then add a little bit of oil. Mix it up. Once you've got a few lumps in there, then you want to get the water. Just pour very little bit of water at a time, or else we're going to end up with this batter and we're not looking for that. We're looking for a sort of soft dough consistency. There we go. That's the consistency we're looking for. Oh yeah. Pass the salt and pepper, please. Sure. Just a good amount of salt. Pepper, white pepper, very importantly and then gently fold it. So at this point, you can leave your dough to rest for a bit. We have our uh, sort of chicken soup that's been cooking for an hour. Now it's time to add the vegetables inside. Carrots, celery, onions and leeks. At this point, it's the first time we're going to season now. A little bit of salt and a touch of pepper. Not too much pepper because we've put quite a bit in the actual dumpling dough. And then just carefully stir it around. I've just made a light bouquet garni with a bit of rosemary and a bit of thyme that we've wrapped with a kitchen towel and then just a bit of thinly sliced garlic that we're going to drop inside. And I've left the garlic in slices because once it softens up, it's quite nice to eat it mm -hmm. and softens. They just cover this lightly and let it sort of steam. Dion, being a professional chef is a lot of pressure. How do you manage to still put love into your work? I think it's very important to sort of keep your mind set on your actual career goal or what you want to achieve out of it and never sort of let any negativity sort of take you off that track. Your passion can get sort of dumbed at times but it's just, it's just being positive, staying on top of it and not allowing it to sort of ask what you really truly passionate about and what you really love. What we're going to do right now is just remove the bouquet garni. Okay. You can see it's still quite fresh so we haven't really cooked it for too long because mm -hmm. we still have that clean chicken flavour going through. And then just carefully drop your dumpling inside. I've never made this before. I put them in in pieces because as they steam, they're going to swell up and then at least you will be able to scoop them out and break ah. them into portions. That's perfect because you can see it's swelling up already. Uh -huh. We're just about done now. We just need to let it simmer for a bit. In the meanwhile, I'm going to get all the ingredients for the vindaloo and we can get that on the go. Awesome. <sighs> Curry time. Wow. That's perfect. We can take this off for now. In the meantime, for our vindaloo. And then we're just going to put a bit of canola oil at the base, but quite liberal. I'll say about a quarter cup. Because everyone knows a good curry, once all that oil comes to the top, <laughs> <laughs> it's ready. A little bit of white pepper at the base, a little green chili, and curry leaves. 
We just want to slowly simmer it so you can release the, some of its aromatic flavors. And now we put our onions in. We don't want to add any sort of color to the onion, so it's on a very low heat, it's on about one. We want it to almost sort of like boil opposed to fry. In the meanwhile, we're gonna make our paste. Let's begin with our spices. Mustard seeds, cumin, together, and then slowly start crushing this up. You wanna do spice by spice? Okay. Because if we add too much, you're not gonna get all of them ground correctly. Okay. Once you begin to smell the cumin, I think you're ready. Black peppercorns, cardamom, and the cloves. Slowly batter it down. At this point, we add the ground cinnamon and then our garlic and the ginger. If we ever look at our onions, at this point, they're sort of simmering really nicely. We're going to cover the pot now with the lid, so it sort of steams. Back to the paste. Just slowly muddle the ginger and garlic. It releases a bit of liquid inside of the actual pesto mortar and brings it together like you see yeah. coming together. At this point, our ginger and garlic into a paste and we're going to add our red chilies. What you want to do is get the red chilies out of the vinegar and then pour all the vinegar into the lamb. All of the chilies? All the chilies. Okay, this is where you want to be a bit careful, sort of cover it because if a chili goes into your eyes, it's game okay. over. You just want to add a bit of salt in your paste to sort of help the chilies to soften up. This is ready to go. So we're going to add this to our lamb. That looks quite dangerous, but... It looks dangerous. We just want to mix this together and then we're going to get it into a pot. And now we just got to get our meat inside. The cool thing about this is you literally leave it alone untouched. Don't move it, we don't, don't move stir it, it. We don't stir it, we just come to it in about a few minutes, check on it, cover it and leave it again. Ah, oh, great. Let's get on to our dessert. You are speaking my love language. Ooh, dessert! <laughs> We're making bread and butter pudding. This was one of those memories as well where I got surprised walking in from school and my Oma had some stale bread from the day before and she put on a bread and butter pudding. Has to be stale. It works better when it's stale bread, so it soaks up more of the custard. What we need to do is make the custard first. We've got three egg yolks over here. I know we said not measuring in it. Caster sugar, one tablespoon. A touch of vanilla essence. And then our cream. Just want to incorporate the ingredients together. So that's basically our custard. To start off, we need to put our bread at the base. I normally just break the bread up into sort of pieces and you get a bit of custard. Just allow that to soak in for a bit. Then our butter chocolate, our dried grapes, raisins, some pecan nuts. So the ingredients you put with it is absolutely up to you. The main thing is the bread, the butter and the custard. Okay, just a few pieces of butter inside. And then more bread. You literally want to just squeeze it all inside. So you want to get it as wet as possible, because when it bakes, it's just going to sort of like... Soak it up. Once it's soaked up, it's must custard as it can then it's ready to get baked in the oven. Just a tip for your bread and butter pudding. Once you put it in the receptacle, then you just want to sort of have it in a bain-marie with a bit of water inside of the base of the bain-marie and then you bake it at 160 for 15 to 20 minutes. Dion, you know I cannot wait. You don't have to. Surprise, I've made one <laughs> earlier on. Thank you, Dion. I hate waiting for things I love. We're ready to go. Let's take it off and start plating up. Oh, look at it. I'm very, very rarely speechless, Dion. Mm. Can you see how those chilies came together? And the vinegar's just breaking everything down. So it's best served with a bit of naan bread. I've served it with some roti, a potato samosa, some poppadom, a bit of rice. Shall we look at the soup? Yes. See how nice it's thickened. And the dumplings made them thicken. Yeah. Just gonna get a bit of the chicken at the base. One or two dumplings. Can you see how the chicken's just falling apart, huh? This must be a great dish for winter. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, let's do some tasting, yeah? Let's do it. I'm gonna go for the soup. I'm gonna go for the vindaloo. Wow, it's so clean. It's got a beautiful dumpling, slightly spongy, aerated, wow. Mmm, it is so soft and that vinegar adds such a well-needed acidity to it. Thank you so much, Dion. Much obliged. Well, you know what time it is now. Dessert! Woo! Dion's motto is cook from the heart and it is evident in every single bite. <laughs> it 
if I may say so myself, that's quite delicious. That's a business. If you may say so yourself. <laughs>